Nicolas Ferrier here, TME for Cisco's NCS5500T, among other things. Today I have a short video for you, and this one is an addition to the lab series we initiated a few weeks back. Remember, the purpose is to execute some tests in our labs, record and present the results, and in the process, provide more internal details on the NCS5500 platform. Today we are testing the fabric card removal and its impact, and I will tell you more just after the break. First, you remember that fabric cards are directly connected to the line cards without mid planes, something we call an orthogonal architecture, and fabric cards are also connected to the fan trays. The consequence is you need to eject the appropriate fan tray to be able to manipulate the fabric card. And you can see in the config guide that we only support this mode of operation during a few minutes. Some important note here. We can operate with a faulty fan tray for a very long time. The two remaining ones will speed up to compensate. But we don't support a situation where we remove the fan tray and don't guarantee the sealing of the chassis for more than a few minutes. It's an important distinction. For the following test, we will shut down electrically one of the six fabric cards to simplify the process, and we will check the impact on performance. We mentioned before that fabric cards are directly connected to the line cards. More precisely, all forwarding ASICs, or NPUs, are directly connected to all the fabric engines. So when you remove a fabric card, you potentially impact the forwarding capability of all the NPUs equally, whether you have one line card, eight or 16 inserted in the chassis, it will be the same impact per NPU, simply because internally it's a full mesh and everything is connected to everything. It will not impact the performance in terms of packets per second, but potentially in terms of bandwidth, so in gigabit per second. Why do I insist on potentially? Some line cards are capable of being line rate on all ports with one fabric card less, but some others will have a slightly degraded performance when used with just five fabric cards. Let's be very clear here. Like all the things we are sharing in this test series, it's essentially a lab issue. If I show you that we have 92% of the forwarding capability in some cases when losing a fabric card, it's not something you can recreate in a production network. The scenario when you have more than 92% load in average on the 900 gig ports of an ASIC is unrealistic. That's what I call a lab thing. So we are detailing in the blog post the N plus one support for every existing type of line card. Now back to our test. We will run it on an eight slot chassis with a 36 by 100 SE card powered by four Jericho plus. We will run the test with 1500 byte, 500 byte and 130 byte packet size. And we'll see what's happening. Keep in mind, we are using also a snake topology which will increase the impact because of a loop effect. To calculate what will be the consequence of losing one fabric card, we will need to understand first the available bandwidth. For each ASIC, we have 900 gig of network traffic and 1200 gig of fabric bandwidth. But internally, we impose headers to this traffic. So what is actually available on the fabric side is 998 gigabit per second. Losing one fabric card will reduce it to 832 gigabit per second, which is 8% below the nominal 900 gig that we need for line rate. Now let's see what we experience in a lab. Starting with 1500 byte packets, we see around 11% of drops on the traffic generator. On the router itself, we use a graphical view of the ASIC, and particularly we check the ENQ discarded reasons. We see IDR DRAM rejects, resource errors, fair adaptive discards, check on the blog post to get more details on these messages. Now we reduce the packet size to 500 bytes and we clear the statistics. This time we see between 8 and 10% of drops. Finally, let's use the NDR packet size for this line card, which is 130 bytes. We can see from 12 to 16% now. Back to the router one last time, we will check the IDR DRAM drops and we can see quite a lot of full DRAM rejected packets. And we are seeing drops because of DRAM block condition. It occurs when we exceed the bandwidth the DRAM interface can handle. It's exactly the same situation I was describing last week 
in our NDR test video, when the packets are split in cells, exceed the fabric capacity, generate a back pressure message, then evict the VOQ to the DRAM, and finally saturate the DRAM capacity, something around 450 gig read and write simultaneously. That explains why we have slightly higher drops than the 8% we got from the math. That's all I have for today. Next week, we will push 4 million IPv4 routes into the field. Thanks for watching. Please leave your comments and a question below or in a blog post. Ciao!